So we're we're intending to do Alien Covenant after this. Yes. Should we just talk about it as one one movie, one podcast? Because they're so closely tied. I think we yeah, might we do that. I think we might struggle separating them clearly. And okay. it it doesn't I don't feel like there's anything I'm gonna say about Prometheus that I'm not gonna say about Covenant. Other than yeah. Covenant's way better. Oh, uh, it is better for sure. Uh, but other than that, it's kind of the same story. And they're both so different than anything else. It's just kind of like, well, different thematic thematically. They do a lot of stuff very similar to the other Alien movies. Um, I will. Covenant felt like an actual horror movie. Yes, this is a Covenant. Definitely is the best horror film out of all of them. It's the yeah. It it, it has the most uh, stakes. It feels the aliens feel the most uh, dangerous. And I think mm-hmm. that's because of David. I think giving uh, someone with logic, someone who can you know process and set things up, yeah. makes them so much scary. Because now, instead of a monster, you have someone using a weapon. Like an army, yeah. Yeah, and so that becomes way scarier because you there's, it's not just chance. It's not just... You don't just get lucky. You're working. You're playing chess against someone who's actively trying to kill you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but so with Prometheus, the storyline is you have this uh, group of people who found all these. Uh, what is it? Hieroglyphics? Is that the right word? Um, Cave paintings. Yeah, I don't think they're hieroglyphics. That's like Egyptian stuff. Um, but they found stuff in Egypt. They like they found yeah. like. 10 different things from all over the world and uh they all show these five the same uh, yeah. planets right they all show people pointing to these five planets and mm-hmm. they're like what is this what is this and then they scan the galaxy and they find five planets that match the layout now i thought this was dumb because these people accurately spaced it all out to where you would like if i drew you know on the wall picture of the solar system you wouldn't look at that and be like oh wow check this out this is clearly the solar system everything lines up perfectly you know what i mean like it wouldn't be spaced correctly you wouldn't have the because right so (sighs) they they find they find the five planets as if it's flat right the paintings on the wall are flat and they take mm-hmm. that and they superimpose it over the actual planets. If you shift the camera just slightly, now those planets aren't going to line up. And if you come yeah. from, you know, 90 degrees a different way, or you come from the top, you come from the bottom, those planets don't line up anymore. And so, yeah, that part's a little ridiculous. Yeah. And like, I get that they could, you know, they have supercomputers that could do all of it and, you know, process it all and, look at it from every angle and piece it all together. It just feels a little goofy to me, but yeah, you know, it's no big deal. So because of that, okay, go ahead. Oh, so because of that, they decided to go on this expedition to go and find who created life. And this is where the story takes a huge turn from anything that's happened before. Um, Mm -hmm. This is the first real theme of, who creates you know the like the creators like what is life what is what is humanity what is you know ai versus humans humans versus the architects like all this layered um you know i don't even know what to call it like what is the purpose of life this is the first time alien has become that and it felt way too deep it was super deep compared to the other ones yeah but and not even but not done in a good way. You know, like if it felt like forced clunky. Yeah. Um, and it just wasn't clear. And I, my theory or my thought when I was watching, I was like, this is a four hour movie that they cut down to two and they're, they're missing so much, so many scenes, so many, you know, character beats and development, but it's still way too long. Like the, the story moves so slow. It's so slow. And they 
everything, every step of the way is like, it just happens. <laughs> you know, there's no real clear exp- explanation. There's no real clear, like, why the characters changed their opinions on certain things. You know, like, it's just, I don't know, man. I, I was not a fan of Prometheus. Uh, what did you think of the characters? The characters were somewhat interesting. Um, I, I thought most of them were. I liked I, so the characters in Covenant. I really liked. I felt like they all had a lot of depth. Yeah, that um, I agree with. But in Prometheus, I I didn't feel so. It wasn't as bad as Alien One, where the characters were just you know these archetype roles, right? You have Bland. you know the strong woman, the jerky guy. Like I don't know. I can't even remember all the characters from Alien, but no, he, that was his name, Jerky Guy. Jerky Guy. Uh, he just always had Slim Jims in his pocket. Um, yeah. But in this, in Prometheus, they they didn't feel like they had. The, okay, they didn't feel like they had character behind the scene. Do you know what I mean? Like, they mm-hmm. felt like they only existed in the scene that they were in. They didn't, you didn't feel like they were, um, they had any backstory. Yeah. They didn't feel like they had any backstory, but they didn't feel like broken in. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like when you have a broken in baseball glove or a broken in pair of shoes, like you, you, you know, they're not new. You can tell yeah. they're not new. And these all felt like brand new. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like it's a weird way to describe it, but they all felt like this is, these characters don't exist outside of what you're seeing right now. And that's how that was a, um, what I got from Prometheus from the characters. Like they were fine, but they just felt like to serve a purpose. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I, I still don't, uh, it was just so confusing. to me. (laughs) Well, like I said, they cut out quite a bit. They cut out a lot of the motivation and they cut out, a lot of the discovery like here you have so these this group of scientists land on this planet which uh, this this drove me nuts because Uh here you have they they fly in they come into the atmosphere and the guy sees he's like god doesn't build in straight lines let's go to that you know and so they go to the first thing they see and they go inside they're exploring looking all around and they're like they're all dead we came here for nothing. I'm like, you're on an entire planet. <laughs> you went to one building one. and you yeah. decided everyone is dead. Like, what on earth are you talking about? Like, you, yeah, you get back in your spaceship, you do a couple laps. <laughs> and you landed in oil, Dell. <laughs> it was like, this is it. There's nothing else here. There's no other options. This, this is all it is. And so I was just like, get like, you know, keep looking, try a few more times. But so they get into this building or this dome that the, I I think they're called, I think we can call them architects, right? Like that's the the nickname nickname that they give them, um, which they're like eight foot tall, giant baldies, (laughs) baldies that are, um, I don't know what color you call them. It's it's white, but not like pale gray. But it's not. Yeah, it's it's not like Caucasian white. It's like uh, you dumped white out on them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they have all the abs. So many abs. Oh yeah, like Uh, seventeen. Yeah. Um, but so they're they are in this building and they're all dead. You know, they find they find one who's been group. Yeah, they find one who's been decapitated. And they're like looking around and they realize, oh, this place has been terraformed. They've made this so we can breathe here or so they could breathe. Yeah. And we also can breathe. So then they all take off their helmets. And it's like, wow, yeah. this is a terrible idea. <laughs> Which, I mean, even one of the characters had pointed that out, but. She did it though. No, we're just, <laughs> she, yeah, she did it. Yeah, she's <laughs> like, well, I guess we'll all die. Yeah. It's, it's nuts. It's insane. And so she, they all take off their helmets and they're all walking around and, uh, they, they find the, the dead head and they, they bag it up and then they realize them entering into this place 
uh, they disturbed the atmosphere and things started to get destroyed. So they're packing everything up, they're running, and now this giant storm is coming in, which that storm is out of nowhere also, right? Like, I don't know if you remember, but that storm doesn't feel like it made any sense. It felt like a reaction to them being there. But it I vaguely remember the storm. Yeah, because they're running, they're trying to get away from the storm, and she almost gets there, but the head falls down. She runs over and picks it up, and the storm like throws her into the spaceship. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But like, I, I don't feel like it felt like a reaction to them being there, but at the same time, it was just like a natural occurrence, and so it was just like a weird uh, order of events, you know, like. Mm-hmm. Um. But so then they start doing tests on the head. So she survives. She's fine. They start doing tests on the head. And uh, just find out that it's it's a helmet. That's not even a head like they thought. Well, I mean, it is a head. But there's a not. head inside the helmet. Yeah. Yeah. Because it kind of, I want to say it kind of looked like the xenomorph. I That's what I thought it was. Yeah. It was like a and bigger, then, it was like somewhere in between the yeah. predator and a xenomorph. Um, yeah. It's kind of the way it looked. But they realize that the architects and humans DNA are identical. And uh-huh. this is where David makes no sense. So David is the AI. He's Michael Fassbender. He made no sense to me in the whole thing. I could not understand his motivations. None. Zero. <laughs> it was so dumb. Uh, he is frustrated that um, he cannot create basically is what we find out in covenant is they kind of they kind of fix his character in prometheus for with covenant um, they make him more interesting yeah well they, they kind of explain some of the stuff he does uh but it's still it's still really strange so he's frustrated that he isn't he isn't special to the humans and yeah. he's having a conversation with the like the main girl's boyfriend or husband whatever and he's like why do you want to brother yeah why do you want to talk to the architects you know what are you what are you hoping to get he's like i want to know what it's all about and he's like well why did you create ai why did you create us and he's just like because we could and david was like well what are you gonna do if that's the answer they give you and the guy was just like dumbfounded by that but (laughs) because of it during that conversation david who had brought back poison from the the dome thing. Yeah. So, so he, that's that's where I started getting really confused. Yeah. When he poisoned the dude. Well, not even that. Well, so bef- like he picks up the glass and puts his finger in the cup when he picks it up, uh-huh. which is yeah. weird, but normal. Right. And so we know he had poison on his fingertip. And so it was like very clear. Okay. He just poisoned the cup. Then he pours the drink, he pours the tea or whatever it was, and then as he's handing it to the guy, the guy's got his hand on it, David drops his finger right into the cup. His skinny dips right in the middle of it. <laughs> yeah, and the guy doesn't say anything. Like, it was so, like, aggressive. Like, I was like, oh, gross. <laughs> like, like, hey, David, can I get another one, please? Your finger just went in. Yeah, exactly. It, you would not be like, oh, okay, thanks for that. You know, he was, like, very... He, just in his face like, he's like oh he's the he's the robot he probably didn't even feel it um i don't want to embarrass him yeah and he uh just drink it. and this was where i i was kind of getting a little confused with the aliens because uh yeah the face huggers i get right the face huggers implant an alien into the the, person. the host right the person or the yep. cow I think a cow yeah. is the only other thing. Um, like I was like, okay, I'm on board. I, I I can follow that logic, but now it's just like the tiniest amount of alien DNA in a cup yep. of alcohol, I believe. <laughs> of, Which should have killed it. Yeah, yeah. You, you would think would destroy whatever that was. He drinks it, and now he is infected with an alien that grows so fast yeah like he gets poisoned he starts freaking out and i'm trying to remember what was the alien that came out of him uh okay so because i'm i'm confusing it with covenant with the one that comes out of the guy's back and that's definitely not it 
and I'm confusing it with the one that comes out of the girl that she has the operation to get out in uh, Prometheus, but I can't remember what happens to this guy who got the drink, who got alien roofied. Uh, Yeah. Um, I don't, you know what? I don't remember. I don't think it was a standard alien. No, none of them were none until the very end with the face. Yeah. Um, Well, no, it wasn't even a face hugger. That got him. It was kind of a face hugger. Uh, but something. I'm trying to think what was. Oh, you know what? Nothing came out of him. That's right. So he gets, oh, yeah, he, he gets poisoned. He gets yeah. And he's, you know, <laughs> coughing up blood and freaking out. And he's running back to the ship. And this yeah, is so where they go out again. Yeah. And, Char- and I don't know what they're doing. Well, so what the purpose was. So let, let's just finish up his story real quick. He's he's they're running back to the ship after their second outing, and yeah. Charlie Theron uh, sees them and they're like, "We can't bring him back on the ship." And the guy's like, "You're right, you're right, kill me." And she burns him with a flamethrower. And this is what again the third again. or fourth time, <laughs> the worst way a mercy Why? killing. Like this just is put a bullet in his head. Yeah, or hit him with a rock, Taylor. If we ever get to the point, you have to kill me. Flamethrower is the I'm last gonna just resort. Set you on fire. <laughs> just gonna find a match. And just hope start it, slowly. Hope it <laughs> start, start at the feet. <laughs> it's just like how horrific of a way to mercy kill someone. Um. Yeah. But so he gets burned alive. But yeah. So they go. It, you can't even call it a mercy kill at that point. No, it's, it's just torture. Still, which is. But so they they before that happens they end up they do end up going back um, because the they split up in the first group to go yeah. to take the head back and there was a group who was still oh no no that's why they went back right yeah. because the two guys that were stranded yeah so they they had split up the head the head group that took it back went back and there was a group of guys with a, um, a scanner which I thought was a pretty cool the scanner thing. Because it was like going around the entire ship, like revealing little by little by little. And at the end of the movie, they have a complete scan and they realize like, oh, this is a spaceship. This isn't a building after all. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was cool. The two guys who are left behind, like Kirk Cameron, they're in the, you know. In just this, like Saving Christmas. Just like Saving Christmas. They're in the poison room and yeah. they see these snake creatures pop out of what looks like oil uh-huh. and the guy's like wow look look at this thing you know he's like getting really he was close like fascinated yeah by this worm you would be you should be I'd terrified be out. i'd be out so fast so fast i'd be gone this thing was the size of a king cobra it was so yeah, big exactly and you had no idea what it was and the guy just kept getting closer to the point where he put his hand out to like pet it. And it wraps around his arm. With, oh, so stupid. It bites his hand and then it wraps around yeah. his arm and then it starts breaking his arm, which I thought was pretty cool. Like a pretty cool use of the snake. Uh, like that it would be so strong that it could get enough leverage. Like is that it was a, a cool moment. And then he's like, get it off me, get it off me. And the other guy comes over and chops it. And the... Yeah. um. The, the acid gets its face. Yeah, it gets his mask. So he still had the space helmet on, but it burns through and gets onto his face. So he falls down, and the yep. uh, the I want to say the other the guy worm, it gets inside of his helmet. Well, it gets inside um, of his suit. Yeah. So because his arm snapped, the bone popped through the suit. The worm regrows everything that was just chopped off. Which again, how where's all this like matter? coming from like how are they growing so quickly uh, ah, it's evolution oh okay and it goes inside his suit goes inside his face and goes down his throat which yeah like my wife said so my wife has watched all these with me she's like it's really weird how obsessed they are with shoving things down people's throat like so it's it's the men too yeah they have a thing against men <laughs> but uh so i didn't it it let's see it plants like it lays eggs or whatever it puts a baby inside of it Um, incubates and then we that's it we it goes away from them 
and goes back. The, yeah. the guys come back and they come back to only find one person, which is the guy with the arm broken. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to figure out what happened. And the thing bursts out of his chest. Or his back? Or does it come out of his mouth? No, it was his chest. Um, I thought it was his chest. I don't know. There's so many chest bursters in the series. No. And I believe they kill it pretty quickly. Or it gets away. Yeah. Either way, it doesn't really matter because there just seems to be an endless supply. <laughs> They're always re- There's so many of them. They're always coming back, but the one of the interesting parts. It's all the same alien. Was the guy with the acid on his face, is now mm-hmm. being controlled by the aliens. Like it's not just. So the acid isn't just acid, I guess. So it like is mind controlling the guy. Oh. So he he was like freaking I, out. I don't remember that. And fighting with him, yeah. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't. Well, you know, and I. I one of my problems was this movie was very dark, mm. and there was a lot of stuff that was hard for me to see. Yeah. So, that's probably what happened. That, yeah. So that he, makes a little more sense, I guess. The guy with the ass on his face shows back up at the ship and kills like four people, and then Aegis Alba, ah. Aegis Alba, is like, "We got to go fight yeah. him," and goes down. They run him over and set him on fire. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So people are just dying left and right, like. There's no, but, um, David, he goes on his own little journey. Yeah. And this is where I was started getting confused at what he was up to. Yeah. Cause he finds an architect, right. And it's still alive. He finds one in hypersleep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. B- <sighs> <laughs> because so he finds, they find a hologram kind of explaining what the place is, which I just Alba, he, he's like, this is a forward operating base. They're preparing to go and destroy earth. And it felt very like that's one thing to be an assumption, but now this is just fact. Like here's a fact of the movie. We don't have anything to support it. This guy thinks it. So that's what Mm -hmm. we're going with. Like it it felt very quick, you know? Yeah. Um, But so that, that's what it is clearly like the, the movie and covenant support that, you know? Um, mm-hmm. but the, so then they come back they burn the dude for for minutes he rubs <laughs> and but yeah so David is still searching everything trying to mm-hmm. find the architect because we find out David's creator who we thought was dead which I'm I can like I know I'm so sure that it drives me crazy because there's nothing, mm-hmm. there's no way for me to know, <laughs> like to confirm this. Yeah. The old guy was the uh-huh. main girl's dad. That girl yes. and Charlize Theron are sisters, but they don't reveal it in the movie. And it drove me crazy. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Yeah. Wait, wait who do you mean the main girl? The, the, girl um, the girl that looked like the lady from Reno 911. Oh, wait, was she from Covenant? Now, yeah, no, no, yeah, I think yeah, that's, she, that's Covenant. Covenant. No, the, the girl that with brown hair who survives at the end. Okay, the, the girlfriend of the, the, the couple. Yes. You're saying that her and Charlize Theron are sisters? Sisters. The old guy is both of their dad. Is that a theory or is that something that I missed? That's a theory. Okay, you're wrong then. Well, no, this is. That's a theory that what, was in based the, on what? the four hour cut of just everything that they're doing. The frustration between Charlize Theron and the girl, the like the bitterness between Charlize Theron to do this mission when it was only for the one, the other girl, the, for them to show the dad as young in the beginning mm-hmm. with the girl to establish that he's religious to show all that. Um, and not have that come back, and then for the old guy to actually be a young guy. Here, I, maybe I can. Let's look at this. I'm gonna pull up the IMDb and see if that's the same actor. Okay. Because if that old guy is the same actor as the young guy, then you mean I, the the old guy from Prometheus, Prometheus is the same guy from the beginning of this movie of Covenant? No, 
the old guy in Prometheus is the same guy from Covenant. Or no, <laughs> sorry, from yeah. Prometheus. The old guy. No, because they show they show him in Covenant. Yes, in the beginning of Prometheus, David watches the main girl, the girl who survives. He watches her dream. He sees her at a lake talking to her dad, and uh-huh. he gives her a cross. I'm saying that okay. guy is the old guy. I don't think so. Here, I'm, well, I'm trying to remember because that guy was notable, but the old guy is Guy Pierce. Um, hold on, I gotta remember. Let's see. Is it Guy who Pierce? Was that guy? Yeah, it's Guy Pierce. In- and the dad was. In Prometheus, that was Guy Pierce. It was Patrick Wilson, so definitely not the same guy. Dang it. All right, whatever. I just wasted everyone's time. <laughs> not mine. I knew you were wrong. <laughs> um, anyways, it doesn't matter. The story would have been in- more interesting, in my opinion, had they been sisters. It would have added a lot more layers and a lot more conflict between the old guy, between the two sisters, and for them to both survive at the end. I was like, oh, they're definitely going to reveal that they're sisters now. And then Charlize mm-hmm. Theron got crushed, and it was like, okay, so that was super anticlimactic. Oh, it was way <laughs> anticlimactic. Yeah, but, but uh, whatever. Yeah, it doesn't. So matter. now mm-hmm. the dude is dead. He's burned. They're back on the ship, and it's revealed that now she is pregnant. Oh, it's also revealed that she can't get pregnant. <laughs> yeah, but I, guess I what? can't create can't life either. Alien. It was so heavy handed. It's like, okay. That's because she was only trying to get pregnant with humans and not Oof. aliens. Didn't even bother trying. I know. What a disrespectful. Bigoted is my opinion. Very bigoted. And so she is pregnant and it is growing rapidly. So yeah, so they <laughs> they they she's resting, right, from all the events, and then two people in hazmat shoots show up and try to take her away, she just beats them up and runs away, and they never come back. And this is never referenced again. Like, hey. Yeah, they're like, ah, you, she's gone. You attacked us. We were trying to put you in quarantine. Like, this isn't cool. You still have to go to quarantine. You don't get to just run around. Your freedom is gone. You should be in quarantine. But right, nope. If she gets away initially, then just let her go. It's fine. It's not a big deal. <laughs> it's like the whole, if you... uh try to murder someone or on death row you try to put him death if you escape the cops the first time (laughs) then they just are like ah he's good he he did it he won he won this round we gotta wait till the next crime he's got to kill someone again before we can even bother (laughs) oh man so she is pregnant with the alien and she wants uh david to remove it and i don't remember what his reasoning was he just didn't have the right tools or the right setup to remove it? Right? Was he, that what he said? Um, I don't remember what he said. I think he just said that they're not set up to do that kind of procedure. But then she does it anyway. So was he just lying? I mean, we know he wants the alien. So yeah. Well, he's I yeah. He's clearly probably, he's clearly doing it for to keep the alien alive himself. right yeah. he's he's lying to her to keep him alive but I, I don't remember what the excuse was but she's freaking out she's panicking um yeah because he does like an ultrasound sees it she's like let me see it and he's like you don't want to see it and then i think he like kind of reveals that he's not gonna help her i don't think he like gives her a, a, an excuse he's like yeah no i'm you're, you're, <laughs> you're gonna do this i thought he just said that we're not we're not equipped to do that here well, the the machine says that, right? And I, I don't know if you're getting that mixed up or if I'm forgetting yeah, him be. saying that, but he she is, gets it, machine. She gets in the machine and starts hitting the, hitting the buttons and it says this is only for males, which was a weird Like you got a super Is that what it said? Yeah. You got a super smart robot and it's like, "Ah, sorry." And so she's like, <laughs> "Remove foreign body from abdomen." And then the machine comes in and cuts it all out. And uh, I thought that was a cool scene, but it was also kind of comedic <laughs> to me. Like I was kind of laughing when I was having it. I did think it was a cool concept. Yeah, for her. Now, her was to be... that alien a face hugger? No, this was like a squid alien, but it also worked as a face hugger. Yeah, 
Um, but yeah. it gets really big. Yeah, so that you can see it like coming, like trying to push out of her stomach, right? It's like growing so rapidly. And so she inputs all the stuff. The thing cuts her stomach open. She's wide awake the entire time, pulls her stomach open, and with claws grabs the alien. And then it's yeah. it's sewing her up, but the alien's growing right in her face. And it's like snapping at her, snapping at her. She's trying not to move, trying not to panic. And the machine's like finally like uh, stapling her clothes. And she slides out and like barely escapes getting Trapped. attacked by the yeah. alien. But like her whole abdominal wall was just split in half. It's you know, real. You know, like staples do not fix you. <laughs> like you're not just good to go. So she like, she's just been cut in half. And now is running around, and she like every once in a while like yeah, she oh, should have been spilling out as she ran. <laughs> it's just oh, that's gross. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that alien is just in there growing bigger and bigger for and not eating, not consuming anything, just just growing. Which it still bothers me how quickly they do this because in the first one it took like a day or so for the alien to get so big, you know? Yeah. And now it's like almost instantaneous. It's instant, yeah. Um, but yeah, so she's getting out, and then I think this is when the guy with the acid shows back up and like kills everyone. And then they kill them, and the, their numbers are like dwindling quick. And Which has kind of just become the theme for these alien movies: is only two people per crew are going to survive. Yeah, unless you have a little dirtbag kid. Um. Well, if the, if there's a kid, he's that's one of the what that's one of the two. Well, and the number two, three people survive. Plus, I thought it was. I thought it was just Ripley and Ripley, Newt, Newt, and the lieutenant that they had like a romantic thing. He survived, and also the AI survived in number two. Uh, kind of. Yeah. The AI's I mean, head, because he comes he back in number destroyed. three. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, okay, the, so the Lieutenant go. and Newt die in the plane crash in the beginning, number three. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, um, but so she, she's running, trying to like survive after being cut open and finds, I, I guess, Guy Pierce, who's playing an old guy, which I still stand by. Very weird, uh, put a young guy in old man makeup if you're not going to use him as a young guy. Just get an old guy. It looks way yeah. better. And he didn't well, do. Well, I think they. He probably will have a bigger role in the next. Well, so he had a a somewhat role in this one. Yeah, in, so in, small in though. Yeah, but maybe it does end up being a bigger role because supposedly this is going to be a trilogy. But I didn't even think so. I'm assuming it's Guy Pierce in the beginning of Covenant. It is. Yeah. I didn't even think that was the same actor. I was. I just figured they got oh, someone really? new. Yeah. Like I didn't recognize him as Guy Pierce. That he looked a lot different. Like he looked familiar, but not not enough for me to be like, "Oh, that's Guy Pierce." You know what I'm saying? He looked pretty Guy Piercey, I think. Yeah, maybe. I mean, his hair was different. His face was like grayer. You know, like almost like like way darker than he well, normally looks. They they went out of their way to make him look different. He didn't look like standard Guy Pierce. Yeah. But anyways. So she finds the old guy and she's like, what? You're alive? <laughs> and everyone's just like, yep, don't worry about it type of thing. <laughs> and David's like, we found one who's alive. We're going to go take him to see him. And David's death in this was so great. <laughs> He's just standing there. So they, they wake up the architect and the architect just standing there and just grabs David by both sides of his head and snaps his head right off. And I yeah, was just like, I was just cracking up. It was so goofy to me. And I thought when that, before that happened, I was like, oh, the architect, the, the, the wrap up of this movie is David is going to be more resemblant of the architects than humans. Mm -hmm. And he's going to see not David's humanity, but David's architectness <laughs> you know like yeah. his 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 character his um his the being features. yeah is gonna yeah. be closer to them and so they're gonna accept him while they reject everyone else and that's gonna be the arc david has always been 
left alone or like rejected. Now to come find out the architects, people. yeah, the architects accept him, but reject his creators to like come full circle. And I was like, oh, this is what's about to happen. And then the architect goes, nope, and snaps his head right off. And I was like, okay, well, there goes that theory. Like to me, that still is a better story arc for David than what we get. Yeah. Um, so presumably they thought that if they went to the architects, they could just extend Guy Pierce's life. That's what his main goal was. Yeah. Yeah. They thought, oh, we, if we can find the creators of life, they can extend my life was kind of the thing. So are we, so is that theory true that these are the creators of life in this universe? I, I think it's never confirmed, but I think that's what canon canonically. That's what's going on. I think because okay. they have the same DNA, it's enough to say, yeah, they created life, whether it's in a way that, you know, they left, you know, their DNA to grow and develop into humans, or if they made them kind of like they, yeah. the humans make robots. Like, I don't really know what the structure is, but I'm fairly certain it's safe to say that the architects are the creators of humanity based on these but, two but movies. This, but this also takes place in, in a world where there is God, right? Because we know that there's religion and the cross and all that. They're saying that's wrong. The architects uh, usurp God. Okay. So the existence of them being the creators is saying that God does not exist. And that's why that's right. faith is so looked down upon in these movies, which is yeah. weird. Um, because it's, it well, according to the movies, it's wrong. And then according to society, it's wrong. But everyone with faith is the hero or the one who's willing to make the right choice. Yeah. And so it's like a weird commentary on it all, you know, like it's like, yeah, even though faith is wrong, it's good to have, which is dumb. Yeah, I didn't understand what they were going for. Yeah. It, well, it doesn't make sense. I think it's a problem. Um, yeah. But so David's dead. The architect kills the old guy. They're dying together. And we find out that David was like disappointed in the old guy. He's like, he didn't even deserve to. Be re recreated <laughs> yeah. um he was weak and i can't remember if there's any other like notable deaths and people just start dying left and right the woman um is the only one who ends up surviving she finds david's body finds his head puts him back together yeah. and he's like she asks him can you fly their ship and he says yes and she's like, I, I want to go to their home world. And uh, he's like, all right. And uh, what happens is they get chased on their old ship. The alien that was birthed out of her is uh, has grown to the giant squid size. She's now running. Now it's a Kraken. Yeah, now it's a Kraken. <laughs> she runs by it. The architect gets a hold of her. She opens the door. The giant alien grabs the architect implants an embryo or a fetus or whatever into the architect she escapes her and david fly off that architect births a xenomorph and this is the moment where you it reveals that hey this is an alien movie and it's like okay like i just don't know i don't i'm i'm well, curious if people were surprised because yeah, I was gonna say, do you think you would have had it figured out I, by by the end of the movie? I don't know. I think I feel like if you knew the, it, the fact that David exists, yeah, would be a big. The fact that it's a a robot made to look like a human, you know, working amongst humans, and it's a space movie by Ridley Scott. That so that's that's the biggest contention, right? Or the biggest point that would be difficult to know, right? So if yeah. if I knew it was Ridley Scott and I connected the dots that Ridley Scott made Alien, then I'd be like, oh, this is a secret Alien movie. If yeah. I just went and saw this movie and didn't have all the, like if I didn't just watch all the other Aliens right before this, there's probably a lot I would have missed and I would have been annoyed 
feeling like, man, they're ripping off Alien quite a bit. Like they're they're taking a lot of the stuff that happens in Alien and just throwing it in this movie. You know what I'm saying? Like if I didn't realize yeah. it was the same director, same people who did it all together um until the end of being like oh wait this is an alien movie that's weird you know it's like <laughs> yeah i don't know it uh i just i'm curious on what what people's reactions were and it was probably ways to find out but yeah uh, but overall this prometheus not great um no i was not really a fan of it it was slow at least it was messy it looks better though it, it looks, looks so much better than the other movies yeah it looks a ton better, but it just it should. is a mess. The story was a mess. The the inciting incident or like all the all the moments the um the moments that move the plot ahead were like just out of nowhere. They didn't really feel, yeah. you know, earned or established. They just kind of happened. And like I was saying at the beginning, I think this is like a four hour movie. I bet the director's cut is so long. Because yeah. there's so much cut out of this. And it just, I don't know. I'm uh, not really a fan of Ridley Scott. Like, I like The Martian. I liked um, Gladiator. Gladiator. But those feel like The Martian wasn't even that great. The book is what I like. And it was cool to see the book yeah. on screen, but it's nowhere near as good. You know, it's nowhere yeah. near as exciting or compelling. It was like, oh, that was fun. You know, like Matt Damon's charismatic and, you know, the story is entertaining. And I have all the knowledge from the book that increases your appreciation mm-hmm. of the movie. But like, I don't feel like Ridley Scott did a great job with that. And all these alien movies, I definitely don't think he did a great job with. And I know, I'm sure that yeah. will make people mad because people love uh, Alien. Cares? The, like the first okay. one, <laughs> but man, these have, these have been bad. But so, quick question: the yes, alien that is born at the very end mm-hmm. is that a random alien, or is that a notable alien? Is that like it's random? It doesn't it doesn't come yeah, back okay. because so we coming into Alien Covenant. Um, uh, so this is which I I thought was kind of interesting. It was a a, a colonist ship. There was 2,000 yeah. colonists and like 17 mm-hmm. crew members. And, uh, and like a 1,000 embryos. Yeah. Well, I don't know what those embryos were. Were they people, humans? Is that Was that yeah, the idea? Yeah, to, to, to further colonize. Okay. That, yeah, I, like I knew that they he was checking them, but I didn't realize that they were human embryos. Well, that's my assumption at least. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I didn't know if they were animals, if they were something else. Because like... I feel like taking embryos was a weird way to colonize. Like you just have 2000 people and babies are going to start showing up <laughs> once you get there. Yeah, it's, it's true. Um, but anyway, so they're on this journey to colonize and uh, there is a, an event that uh, damages the ship, right? Everyone gets rocked out of their uh, pods and stuff like that so they start getting woken up in an emergency the crew gets woken up um what well, was his name wilson no walter walter, walter Wal- yes so now matthew fassbender is now walter who is a new alien michael michael yes yeah, thank you michael matthew fassbender is his much less successful brother <laughs> uh he is now walter the alien or the robot yeah he starts waking people up they they can't the one person they can't get out, who's James Franco, which I I saw him and I was like, is that James Franco? No, nah, I, I was the same. I couldn't tell. I was like, it looks like James Franco, but yeah. I'm not. I didn't think he was in this movie. Well, it seemed like such a uh, weird role just to get burned alive. But then yeah. when you considered like Danny McBride is in this. I was like, oh, maybe like because this probably was maybe he was out of school by then. Um, but like you know, he was doing I think law school for a while. Um, yeah. And so it was maybe he was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll be in an alien movie. That'd be cool. I just... legit thought that because I knew that Danny McBride was in it, mm-hmm. that it was my brain, like connecting that Danny McBride and James Franco are in a lot of the same movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Oh, it, that's just what I thought. I was like, it's not. But yeah. then you find out that it was. Yeah. Yeah. So he gets burned alive and they can't save him. 
And this oh, that is was awful too. This is the girl who at least no one did it on on purpose this time. <laughs> he just yeah, he just this does. Is true. Uh, this is the girl who I was saying looked like the girl from uh, Reno 911 with her like so which the short hair is that the, yeah, the yeah. girl from Reno 911 yeah, that you're talking about yeah the puffy yeah, she's weird she's like a mushroom uh-huh. haircut you know what I'm saying like short yeah. sides and puffy top it was just like it's a very strange haircut yeah um, but I didn't it, care for it <laughs> um but that was her husband, her boyfriend, whatever. I, I, they never really clarify other than Danny McBride. He's the only one who like is like, yeah, it's my wife. You know what I mean? Like he's the only one who establishes what his relationship is. Everyone else is just like, yeah, we're together. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You know? And so it's fine. It's just harder to talk about. Um, so he dies. And now we have a new captain who is unequipped and nervous, which I really enjoyed. I like that. I like that they established the captain is dead because the captain has always been someone who has been well equipped and the take leader. charge and the leader. He, he just <laughs> Alba in uh, yeah. Prometheus, you know, like he never seemed like worried and was like okay with yeah. everything. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so now you have this guy who's like visibly shaking and having to get a pep talk to like go and tell them what to do to be the captain yeah and then you know it's like it's already the the camera angles are so much more interesting you know the the depth of field they're using the lenses everything they're doing way more interesting they're establishing characters so much deeper and they're giving this guy like so much uh depth of like okay he's the captain he's now in charge he is scared to be in charge And now he's making bad choices because he's scared. And yeah. instead of just making a bad choice, they he they establish no, he's afraid. He doesn't he wants to seem strong, so he's not willing to let them have a funeral, which is so crazy, but they earn it. That it's like, no, mm-hmm. I get it. I understand. You know, like I, I understand why he made that choice. And it's like, but in the other movies, I feel like they would have he would have been like, no. We're not doing it and left it at that. You know what I'm saying? And that would have been it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh that funeral, I I can't I don't know why, man. I was cracking up when they shot James Franco off into space. It's just so <laughs> just so aggressive. Like he's just they have this body wrapped up in the the airlock and then they yeah. open it up and it just yeah. pff, gets shot yeah. out. And it's just so funny to me for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just like a weird a because weird there's thing something wrong with you. Probably. But like it would have to me, I think it would have been better not to show that. Just have them take their yeah. shot of Jack Daniels, have them say like you know to the to the ones we lose and the ones we love or whatever Danny McBride says. Um, and by the way, Danny McBride was great in this. I was I, so I was worried that he was going to be like too funny mm-hmm. for the franchise. That he was great. Yeah, I was worried he was going to be too much of a character, not so much jokey. But like, yeah, dirtbag redneck. Gonna, I was imagining his character from Tropic Thunder. Yes, yeah, yeah. Bang bang, Being just like a let's. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he he did great. No, yeah, I liked it. Really good. Um. So yeah, so they there's damage to the ship, and because of this weird electrical storm, they have these solar panels that they have to put up. I don't know how often, but they have to recharge every once in a while, and the solar panels yeah. get damaged. And so they have to go through and fix them. And uh, after they fix them, they're looking at everything. And it's like, it's not really at optimal. It's not really working optimally anymore. And they scan what's around them and they find a, uh, a frequency. A, yeah. Oh yeah. They find the, someone singing, take me home. Right. Country the, road. The yeah. country road song, which I thought was when Danny McBride started singing, he's like, that's John Denver. <laughs> thought that was pretty funny well, yeah because because it's i thought it was a funny concept because it's not something that we can really experience now having list you know there's not a lot of music that we listen to uh-huh. that is 200 years old yeah you know like it is uh, for them yeah it's way old or whatever so yeah. it's cool to think that there's still like popular songs even that far in the future yeah that are like even old songs for us. Yeah. 
And so they're like, we need to go check on this. And this planet is actually inhab. No, it's habitable. What's the word? Yeah, habitable. Habitable. You can. We could live here. And so the yeah. the 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 new captain is like, we gotta check it out. We gotta go help them. And maybe we can. You know, maybe this is a viable place for us to live. Because to, he was a bad captain. He was very bad. To get to where they needed to go, where they were trying to get to, was going to take seven more years in hypersleep, yeah. and no one wanted to go back to hypersleep. No one wanted to go back. I, I, I will say, though, he was bad, but not like in the way where you're just like, oh, this guy's an idiot. It's like, I can understand where he's going. You know, like yeah. his thought process, it's just, it doesn't pay off for him every time. Yeah. Every decision ends up being <laughs> the worst possible yeah. thing. Yeah. Which I appreciate. I appreciate that they yeah, allow no, someone sure. to make a bad choice because yeah. I feel like that's. And, and not because they're like a bad guy. It's just yeah. Yeah. They're just inept. He's trying to be good. You know, his, yeah. his character is strong. His logic is bad, you know, and he doesn't listen to the people around him and he is not painted to be the villain, which is something I feel like is so rare to have people who just make the wrong choice and yeah. screw things up and make the wrong choice well. I don't know if that makes sense. Like he he has the logic or he has a thought process to he making the, the bad choice. He has the reasoning behind it. Yeah. yeah. And so anyways, they decide to go and take like a little drop ship down to check it out. They get there and the the girlfriend of James Franco tells the captain like I'm officially uh, fighting you on this decision. This is a bad choice. We shouldn't be doing this. And he's right. like, okay, I'll put it in the report, but you know, I need you to back me up. You're my second. Still have to do it. Yeah. You yeah. still, it's no, you, you're not out of this. You have to, you know, participate type of thing. And so they go down and they're walking around and I didn't like this. I didn't like the little pods that squirted the black ink or whatever. One goes, in the guy's ear, the other one goes up the guy's nostril. What? So what was that? It was they were like little tiny pods that uh, implanted them. Now, like that's what I was saying. Like the what makes an alien grow is very strange. Like the rules have yeah. changed dramatically about yeah. what will create an alien, and these are xenomorphs now. These. It, I was kind of okay with it in Prometheus because it was a different alien. But mm-hmm. now these little pods, this little bit of dust is now creating xenomorphs and it feels very so, strange. So there's multiple ways to make the same alien. Yeah. And uh, so I thought when they landed on this island, I thought this was the first, or not the island, the, the planet. I thought this was the first planet that they were on in Prometheus. But this is the architect's, the architect's home. home. Yeah, so this is a separate planet a, from Prometheus. Yeah, so they 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 point out in well, like you said already in Prometheus, that that planet was more like it was just a military base. Yeah, because they didn't want to do this. They knew what they were doing was dangerous. They didn't want it to be on their home planet, which makes sense. Yeah, and so these little pods put these alien xenomorphs in two guys. And yeah. they start getting really sick. And I, I thought this was pretty Rapidly, cool. Like super fast. Yeah. I like the, like, I feel like I get that they needed the aliens to like move the plot forward. But I felt like just them getting violently sick was kind of enough. You know what I mean? Like they should have just started getting really sick from these things. And that would have been concerning enough. But yeah, they needed a xenomorph to be on the ship and so the crew's all split up you have one one group in space monitoring the colonists you know flying the yep. big ship you have one crew at the drop ship who is you know doing tests and stuff like that and they have one crew exploring the crew yep. at the drop ship is there and the one the first guy who got sick is being rushed back to the drop ship the woman's yep. trying to carry him and he's, you know, puking all over the place, throwing up blood. They get him inside the med room and they take off his shirt. And you see on the back, the aliens like poking holes out of his 
the back, which was like so gross <laughs> to look oh, at. Oh, it was. And, yeah. And then the woman, the um, so let's see, you had so there's Danny McBride's wife and the captain's wife were the two women helping this guy. Yeah. And the uh, the captain's wife locks Danny McBride's wife in the med room with the guy and the alien. Mm-hmm. And it was so like, it was such another, you know, it was another interesting choice to me because that's so evil. And like, I know her idea is like, she's, she's contaminated too, but so are you, you had blood squirted right in your face. You're as contaminated yeah. as she is. And for her to lock the woman in there, the woman's like pounding on the door, let me out, let me out. And just not helping and like getting a gun and trying to, you know, it's just like, it was so compelling the the dynamics yeah. of all that, you know? And what ends up happening is they the uh Danny McBride's wife gets eaten by the alien. She goes in there with a gun, the uh the captain's wife goes in there with a gun and just trying to shoot it, trying to shoot it, and they're going around and she ends up blowing the ship up trying to kill the alien. And yeah. all of them die. And now they can't get a hold of the main ship because of a uh storm. A, yeah, an electrical storm. That's going on. And this is where David pops back in and is like, here, come with me. Or, well, I guess, I guess. Um, First, the other guy dies, though. Yeah, the other guy, the alien. That one comes out of his mouth. Yeah, he pukes it up almost. And it's, again, it's a, one of those things where it's like, what, what are the rules here? Like, let's, it doesn't have to be exactly the same all the time, but some consistency. Up until this would point, help. it's all been coming out of the chest. Yeah. And now they're introducing new. From the back and through the mouth, and then it's I I I. What did you think about how they looked when they were born? Weird, weird. But I thought they looked good. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean, don't know. I think they look better than one. Like, well, yeah, that was an adult toy with teeth. That was ninety. That was ninety <laughs> years ago. <laughs> um, but this one comes out and it like rips that dude's jaw off. And with its tail, right? Yeah, it like slices it off. Yeah. Yeah, the tail that comes around wild. and hits him in the face and knocks his jaw off. Um, and then it, like they're trying to kill it and it escapes and then it grows so fast and comes back and attacks him again. And this is where Walter shoves his hand in its mouth to protect uh, the, the main girl, which had some more weird dynamics because David talks to Walter about loving you know he's in love with that girl while david was in love with the girl from prometheus and walter's like yeah no that's that's not a thing (laughs) um but it was an interesting layer to everything you know like duty versus uh love or emotions or whatever like it was kind of a, a cool element to add um but so yeah they they fight it off and i believe they kill that one too no they don't they don't kill that one uh, no, that no, not that one. They they fight it off and it runs away. David takes them into his lair and is like helping them get remended and all that stuff and like mm-hmm. situated. And then he tells them that they came to. I don't I I don't remember what he said that they came to do, but they show you that he dropped all of the mass weapon or the it basically is a chemical warfare weapon chemical bomb, yeah yeah on top of and all the architects all out. yeah but what, but why uh I, I thought it was for the girl at the time because that's what she wanted to do she wanted to destroy them because they were going to destroy for, Earth. for uh the girl from prometheus yeah the girl from prometheus wanted to i thought kill. they wanted to go find out just what their deal was no because the architects were on a mission to destroy humanity which again sure. doesn't really make sense how they knew that it was like a it was a theory that they just like made that. fact yeah yeah and then they just run with it yeah um and so i think she went to protect humanity by destroying all of them and david helped but david ends up turning crazy in with this idea of wanting to create He's not yeah. he's not allowed to create something of his own and he's so frustrated by it. And so his workaround is that he can create or like 
it's not creating, but he like manipulates the aliens and, you know, puts it like implants them into people and use mm-hmm. them as hosts to grow aliens and all this stuff. Um, and that's kind of his, his own creation in his mind or in his, in his own way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so he's, he is the villain, which <laughs> makes this movie so much better than mm-hmm. alien one, two, three, having a villain who's using the aliens as weapons makes so much more sense instead yeah. of like you've had, you had the company before who was trying to capture them to study them, but not, they weren't really villainous. They were just evil. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It was always, there's good guys, bad guys, but then everyone is just getting killed by the alien. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, it's just, it's so much better. Um, but so people end up dying in this one. The aliens come back and the captain, st- What's that? Yeah, the captain ends up dying, getting a face hugger. Uh, like David tricks him into looking into a pod where a face hugger comes mm-hmm. in, and the alien bursts from his chest. And David is trying to train these aliens, and Walter is the only one who can kind of uh, fight against him. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's one scene where they're like confronting each other, and Walter's like, "I'm not gonna let you go." And David's yeah. like, oh, such a waste. And he goes and kisses him, which was a weird moment. That was so weird. <laughs> um, so not, weird. Not even like two guys kissing weird, but like just like what? Like why is this your go-to move? And then David pulls out a knife and stabs Walter in the neck. And the mm-hmm. face Michael Fassbender makes, I again. Oh, my God. I was cracking up. I'll I was laughing you, so loud. I'll tell loud. you the face that it reminded me of was sleepaway camp yeah at the end of that movie <laughs> yeah it was like so quick and so like crazy I, it was like, just like a rah, like the mouth open <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. so dumb it, it didn't it didn't uh, add up i was like i find it so hard to believe that that's a face that michael fassbender can even make if he wanted to <laughs> well i think it was a um a uh what do you call i don't think it was his face I think it was a like a dummy or like a um, yeah a prop that rolled yeah. the because uh, his eyes rolled back into his head and his mouth popped open you know but it was so unnatural that yeah, I, sleep boy camp yeah I'm pretty sure it was a prop but anyway so he he does that but then David heal or Walter heals and comes back to life and fights David again and you see him they're going at it and. Uh, Walter has the upper hand. David is reaching for a knife. David's like, you know, talking to him and it cuts away. And I I don't know how you felt about this. And I think it was part of what they're trying to do where they want you to feel like, oh, maybe it's David. Maybe it's Walter. And you're supposed to question it the whole time. But it's like, oh, I was pretty sure. Yeah. And so, like, I think they, like, you knew it was David. There was no yeah. doubt about that. But I think their goal was not to trick you that it wasn't David, but it was just to make you doubt it enough. And yeah. I, I was like, uh, almost got it, but like it was I so. Feel like they, they almost yeah. They they, they left some doubt. I'll yeah. say that. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I, I like. I didn't really. I didn't think that was that necessary. And you knew it was coming. At the very beginning, when Walter and David first see each other, it's like, okay, well, there's definitely going to be a body switch at some point. That, that's exactly, yeah. When I was when I first saw them talking, I was like, okay, one of them is going to pretend to be the other. Yeah. And then I kind of forgot about it. And then when he killed him the first time, I was like, oh, he's going to pretend to be Walter. Uh, Walter. Yeah. But then Walter was back. So I was like, well, maybe not. I don't know. And then it kind of went away for a little bit. Yeah. So, but it, it wasn't a huge reveal. Yeah, no, it, it, like it wasn't. I, I didn't find it. It wasn't a twist. You know, yeah. it was like, oh, okay, yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but so they they're running. Uh, everyone's dead. David, who's pretending to be Walter, the girl, get back onto the ship with was it uh, two other guys? I guess. There's a guy who, um, who got acid on his face. 
And yeah, the guy from uh, The Hateful Eight. Yeah, and let's Bob. see, Danny McBride. That was, I guess, that was it, right? Yeah. So Walter, or not Walter, yeah, David, the the guy from Hateful Eight, Danny McBride, and the girl are on the ship, and the Xenomorph mm-hmm. jumps up onto it, and they're fighting. And I thought this was a pretty cool fight scene. I didn't like that she fell off with the cable twice. It felt like, oh, yeah. you know, like it was okay. just like the same thing twice in a row. It was not yeah. that interesting. Um, I yeah. did. I thought it was cool the way they killed the Xenomorph with the claw. Yeah, I, I thought that was with the crane thing. And then how that almost killed them. Like they're, you know, because it, it shifted all their weight. And so they were about all to the crash. Weight, yeah. um, so I thought that was like a really cool scene. Um, they get back on the ship and David, who's pretending to be Walter, is helping the guy with acid on his face. And the guy's like, how's it look? And he's like, don't worry about it. It's fine. And what happens is that guy ends up getting an alien in his chest that bursts out on the main ship. And now you have Danny McBride. Oh, well, so then there's uh, Jesse Smollett, who was in this. Did you recognize him? I thought that was weird. Oh, yes. He's yeah. he him and the uh the other girl are hooking up in the shower, and that alien yeah. that bur- bursted out of the the guy from the Hateful Eight's chest, they die in the shower, and now only the crew, the left of the crew, David pretending to be Walter, you have the main girl and Danny McBride, and then the yep. whatever it is, almost two thousand colonists who are all in hypersleep. Um, yep, and so she's like, we need to take them to our to my turf which was the loading dock which was like to me the the terraforming bay or whatever yeah to me is like one of the worst places like i couldn't imagine yeah there's way too much room the xenomorph is so much faster why not you can jump and climb and all yeah keep him in a contained area where if you shoot your gun you're probably gonna hit him yeah or why like isn't there a way to partially open one of these doors? Lock them down in a corridor, trap them, have mother, which again, I hated that they called yeah, the, that, the AI in this mother. Like in the first one, it felt like a nickname. And they're like, well, yeah. now every mother or every ship has to have a mother. And I was just like, mm-hmm. they would come up with a different name. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so like partially open a door, be like, mother open this up 5% so we can put flamethrowers under the bottom of the door and just burn this thing alive. But no, they're like, let's go to the biggest area on our ship. So the alien has the most chance to, you know, defeat us. And, uh, they send the alien into the vacuum of space yet again, which he gets stabbed by the, the forklift truck thing now, but it's just so boring. Like, how many times are they going to do that? Mm, as many movies as they make, I'm yeah. guessing. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, it's the same thing every time. That's the only way you can yeah. kill an alien. Like, and the, the other thing is they show so many times them shooting aliens throughout the middle of movies where that destroys yeah. them and their heads just blow up. So they're not like hard to kill. Indestructible. Yeah. Yeah. But for some reason, the only way to kill an alien is to shoot it off into the space. The final boss. Yeah. yeah. And so that's always been a frustrating thing. But uh, And then, so they're getting ready to go back into hypersleep so they can go to uh, the main planet that they're supposed to go to in the beginning. They have seven and a half years. And as she's going to sleep, she's talking to who she thinks is Walter, saying like, hey, when we get there, can you help me build the cabin? And somehow she recognizes that he doesn't have any recollection of what she's saying. And I don't know how why, you... Why didn't he just be like, yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> sure, yep. Like, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was like, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> no. Because it's not me. Yeah. And, uh, and somehow she figures out that it's David. And I thought that was kind of a cool moment of her like, freaking out but being put to sleep from the, but it was too late it was yeah. just too late there was nothing she could do and now you have david with two like almost two thousand bodies that he can grow aliens in um yeah to establish the next movie yeah. which 
you know, I think is kind of kind of a cool setup, but I'm not really interested. You know, I'm not like, oh, what is, what's going to Wait until you next? see 2,000 aliens get sucked out into space. <laughs> Just over and over and over again. That'd be awesome. But, One at a time. I don't know. What, I think Covenant is my favorite. I think number... Oh, yeah, it, no, it's the best by far. I think number three has the more com- or interesting story, but I think Covenant does yeah. everything better in, other than that. The characters are the best. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The characters are the best. The development is the best. The choices are the best. The cinematography is the best. I uh, didn't really pay attention to the music, but everything, everything other than like the story idea uh, versus Covenant and three, I think I would have to give it to Covenant. So speaking of the music, they have the alien theme, right? They've had it in all the movies. That's cool. Uh-huh. And then I, I had read something about Prometheus that I thought was super, super interesting. But then I feel like I, I didn't even notice it when I watched it because yeah. I, I, I had seen it ahead of time was for that movie, they mm. took the main theme, right? Yeah. And they recorded it with everyone playing it backwards. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then they, you know, reversed it to and, and played it forward huh. so that it sounded like the theme, but it sounded like a little off, you know, yeah. and like a little creepy. And that's what they went for. And I was like, oh, that is super interesting. And then I didn't even notice. It yeah. still sounded the thing to me. <laughs> yeah, I would have to check, uh, like, see the hear them side by side or like back to back to tell. But that, yeah. that's a cool way to do it because they just reverse the notes, right? Like they. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They played the notes backwards and then reverse. It. Yeah, that's that's cool because that would sound way different. It would it, I, like it, you would think it would sound like you would get it, but it would be, just be like off. Well, think about um, uh, if you have like a, a four count note, right? Going the opposite way is going to completely sound different. So, mm-hmm. and if you go from a one to a four, right? You don't have anything in between it. Now, going the opposite way that four count note is pushing that one note yeah. the wrong way. So when you play yeah. it back, it's, it's, you know what I'm saying? No, I know. Yeah. I so know the, the, the gaps would be different. It'd be, maybe the orchestra was just too good that they can play it backwards. No problem. <laughs> but uh, what do you think? What do you think of Prometheus alien covenant? Prometheus was boring. Alien covenant was Goodish. Yeah. I think Alien Covenant makes Prometheus better. Prometheus yeah, it on does. its own is terrible. Um I think I I would probably recommend people watch Covenant first. Oh, you and, think so? And then watch Prometheus as like a prequel. A um, prequel to the prequel. Yeah. I like maybe I don't know. Like I because you get so much more story. And then you can fill in the gaps as you're watching Prometheus, but yeah, you you kind of the ending of Prometheus is spoiled, but it's also like you know someone's gonna survive. Like it's not, you know what I mean? Like it's not like I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think Just watch it if you want. It's nothing great. Yeah, I think story wise, watching Covenant first would make Prometheus better, but it would also kind of ruin the experience of Prometheus at the same time saying that Prometheus experience is pretty bad. So yeah, however you want to take that. <laughs> um, but so next week, uh, not for the podcast, but for Twitch, we are doing, we should be doing at least we got to set everything up. Alien versus predator one and two together with Aaron in a triple, mm-hmm. triple threat, three way <laughs> podcast to the death. It's going to be bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited it's to watch. Unprecedented. <laughs> Nothing like this has ever happened. I'm excited to watch Alien vs. Predator. Be, have you watched any are Predator you? movies? Nope. Oof. They are terrible. Are they? Are they worse than Alien? No. I've heard they're more entertaining. They're crazier. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so we yeah, will. I'll, I'll watch them eventually we will be back uh next week we'll be back with our next episode of the podcast probably the next episode of the podcast will be the predator 
and then following that will be alien versus predator one and two um yeah but thanks for listening guys we uh we'll be back next week yeah